Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we are going to be starting making some cards with our My Monthly Hero July 2019 kit. We went over what was in the kit last video, so now we're going to try making some cards with this. First card I'm going to make is going to be a window card. And it's not going to have the acetate window, it's just going to be like a three dimensional window card. So I love making scenes with ink blending. So I am going to be using a piece of paper just to be my horizon line. And I am going to take ink and make beautiful blended backgrounds with this. So I'm taking some faded jeans and I am just blending this ink onto this. And I'm using that as my horizon line. Now, I could have used my Wendy Vecchi magnetic sheet, but I decided not to because I was feeling like I was going to be very messy and I didn't want to get my mat all messy. Plus, I'm still waiting on my feet that I ordered for it so I could try it, see if it would slip around. So I got the faded jeans on. Now I'm coming in with some mustard seed and some spice marmalade in my distress oxides to make kind of a sunsetty sky. Now because this is not a full panel that is going to be visible, I am not going all the way around completely. I am just getting the areas that I know is going to be showing the color. Because you're not going to see the other part. It's going to be underneath the front panel. Now. I cut with the die that came with this kit, the little mountain, and I am going to stamp the tree line on top of it. Now you could do the other layer and make it double layered, or you could just do the cut out tree line. Whatever you want to do with this design, you can go either way in whatever technique. And I am using the forest ink. Now I'm going to show you what I meant when I said last video about how sometimes for stamping, these inks are not the best. As you see, that's how it's stamped. It's a little juicy, so sometimes the ink pools in areas and it doesn't stamp well. And it takes quite a few layers sometimes to do it. But since some of this is not gonna even be visible because I'm gonna cut off some of it, I am not gonna worry about it. Okay, so there is our panel, it's ready to go. We are going to put this right there. We are going to use three dimensional pieces as well as stamping to make this inside panel. So we've got that. Now, this kit came with a lot of beautiful little stamped images you can use. And the first one I'm going to do stuff with is I am going to lay out, I believe, my ripples. Alright, so I've lined it all up and I'm using my Paris Dust from Memento. And I do love mixing my Distress Oxides and my dye ink. A lot of people are like, oh, you can mix them? Yes, mix as many inks as you want. They usually don't react weird to each other. They usually sometimes make some beautiful effects. And now I'm going to center my boat boater with his fishing rod and dog companion. And we're going to put him in the panel. Kind of making a nice little masculine fishing card. I really like that kit for this because I don't have a lot of stamp sets that I can say are masculine. Sometimes it's hard to find them. So when you have Father's Day cards or birthday cards for men, it's sometimes hard to find images to use for those because you kind of stuck the cards and golf and stuff like that and it doesn't always fit so there is that and isn't that sweet i did them a couple times in the tuxedo black and i'm also think i'm going to add the reeds and the grass or maybe just the reeds and i'm going to do those three dimensional on the front but i am going to add these little birds because what card would be not Good without birds in the horizon. Of 
that alone is a beautiful design. If I wanted to leave it alone, I could and just put the sentiment on the bottom. Yeah, it'd just be pretty. But we're gonna put some three-dimensional accents to it. So I have this little window I cut out with my old stitch die. And of course the stitching doesn't show because the stitching is on the other oval. But it makes a perfect little window to look through at this image. So I'm taking some scotch foam tape and I am cutting them in little strips to put alongside this image. And I love their tape. I love their squares, but I've fallen in love recently with their tape because sometimes we're going through with shaker cards, we have long strips that you can just cut in half and you can use. And I buy it in multiple sizes. Like this is a thinner strip. And I have the thick one too for when I do need thick strips. I also have the squares that I'm putting on the bottom. And a little tip for you people that do love the scotch, the use of squares. I go to the hardware part of the stores and buy it because they have bigger packs. If you go in the craft section, sometimes they have smaller packs and they cost more money. You can get sometimes more bang for your buck if you go into like Home Depot and buy them because they have bigger packs. So I've learned that over the last few months to start going in the areas where they sell the big packs. And I put Wish You Were Here on the front frame in the same Paris dusk. Pull off all the back strips here. And I try to make it as evenly distributed as I could because you don't want this getting crushed in the mail. You can also do this with craft foam if you want to cut a second little frame and just put the craft foam underneath and adhere it that way too. All right, so now I'm gonna do my reeds. And I'm gonna do this on a scrap piece of the craft card stock I have, the frame out of, and I'm gonna use the cocoa ink that came with the cat. Now, one thing I also want to say about the Hero Arts ink is it will stain your stamps. There's no way to get that off there. And if you're really metic meticulous about ink being on your stamps, you're going to be like, eh, I'm not too concerned with it. You know, I use these every once in a while and it's not going to affect it later on. So I cut out those little, I guess, cattail reeds with the die that came with the kit. And I'm going to adhere these with my roller onto my little frame. And I don't care if it's not touching the little boat part. It's a 3D effect. It can be sticking out. So there is that. So isn't that pretty? That panel is gorgeous. With those little reeds and the 3D effect. And I'm going to take a navy blue card form and I'm going to stick this panel to it. I also made sure to trim down my back a little bit so that none of this would be showing on the outside. After all, we've got the little panel underneath it that could have been a little crooked. And there we go. That alone is a gorgeous card. Perfect for Father's Day, birthdays. And I'm putting inside, and I'm going to do this in tuxedo black. Life is better at the lake. And there we go. This card is complete perfect for any birthday you have for the, a fellow in your life, whether it be a father, husband, son. Great way to make use of this kit. So we're going to do another horizon line again. And this time, we're just going to be making a panel with it. But I'm going to make this panel a little bit more kind of distressed. We're not going to go as clean cut as we did with the first one. We're going to have a little bit more fun with some of the stress oxides and the effects we get with them. So I did 
did the mustard seed and now I'm coming in with spiced marmalade again. And then I'm going to follow up with the worn lipstick. All right, so there's the top part of our horizon line. And now I'm gonna come down with our bottom. Washi tape to the rescue. Coming in with a little lighter color than I did with the last card. Last card I did faded jeans. This time I'm doing broken china because I want it to be a lighter, more look. And I'm not concerning myself with how clean my blending is. Because like I said, we're going for a distressed look. So I am going was going to stamp the full mountain and then do a layering stamp. But I decided on this card, I'm just going to do the peaks. Because I'm going to cut out this image after I'm done. So I'm coming in with London Fog from Memento. And we are going to cut that out. As well as cut out one of the stamped tree lines. And this one I'm going to layer. Okay, so we got that in there. And this time I'm using Cottage Ivy and bamboo leaves to do my layering. All right, so we're going to cut those out as well as I'm going to cut out the little freeform mountains that came with that cute little die. Now I'm just trying to figure out my placement and how I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna make a 3D effect with this by layering them. So now that I got everything figured out, we're going to get some adhesive on here. I had to cut down these a little bit so that they fit a little bit better. Cut that tree line down a tad bit as you notice. And now it's laying a lot nicer. And then we're going to do our little lift on the bottom. And I also have the tree line I cut out too. So I'm going to put those on top. I'm trying to figure out the best place, I think right there. And then I'm going to do the mountains. So I decided I'm going to 3D mount these. So I took some thin strips of the tape that are going to go underneath it. And the reason why is I wanted them to be underneath the what I already have established. And the best way I felt to do that was to 3D mount it. That way it's not buckling under the glue or it won't fall down. And it'll keep it a little bit more secure. And there we go. So there is that. We're gonna trim off the edges of our dies because they are longer than the paper. And now I have this cute little tree line. Now I realized after that I really wanted to do some speckles. So I decided to cover up my design and just do some speckles with water. That way I don't affect the little die cut pieces I already placed. But then I can get some fun water speckles. Just gonna go kitty corner a little bit with my paper just to cover it. And then I'm gonna come off with a dry cloth and just dab off that and do a couple little speckles there. All right, I think that looks good. Maybe I'll put a little bit more here. All right, good enough. 
see how fun this is. Now I'm coming in with my Chandler heat tool. The one reason I really love this tool is because it's got two settings and it has a paint drying setting, which is nice because it's not too hot and it's not going to buckle my paper like traditional heat tools will do. So it's so far, I'm really loving this new tool. I wasn't sure when I went from my Marvy to this one. And I'm actually really liking it because it has that dual settings. All right, so we got this image, and isn't this fun? I'm going to put some water ripples in there just to add some dimension. But yeah, like I was saying with the heat tool, I like that it has a low setting for paints and wet spots. And you have your high for your heat embossing, which is a good thing to have because honestly, we have different techniques we do. All right, so that is the Bahama Blue that I did the ripples in. And now I'm coming in with some Distress Oxides to make kind of a shadow effect, kind of what you would see in the water, a reflection. So I'm coming in with some of the yellows and the oranges that are in the sky. And I'm also going to come in with some Ice Spruce and kind of give it that land kind of mountains in the reflection. Because you would see it in the water as it was reflecting from the sky. So now let me figure out what sentiment I'm going to put in this. But I'm also going to stick those little birds in there again. I really like this little bird stamp because honestly you can always use a little bird in a horizon flying. I think we're going to choose our sentiment. Let me look through my sentiment. Sorry about my arm being in the clip here. Welcome to my happy place. Okay, I'm just going to push that off a little bit. And I'm going to do that in tuxedo black. That way it really sticks out. Isn't that cute? such a pretty card right there it's just beautiful so I'm gonna put it on a black card form that way the colors really pop and it ties in the black sentiment as well as the birds in the horizon and I was gonna add the fish but I think I'm gonna just leave it alone because I really think this is beautiful it almost looks like a vintage postcard kind of look to me which is really cool I have family that lives near Salt Lake and this looks like their views that they get in Salt Lake City. But look at two different horizons but same effect showing the beauties of nature outside. But I really love the distress with the 3D mounting. It really makes it so much fun. Alright so for the third card that we're going to make in this video I'm going to do a night scene, like a dusk kind of scene. So I'm starting with a kind of setting sun or moon. Actually more kind of a moon. And then I'm coming in with the ice spruce and then I'm doing some broken china. Just to give it some blueness. Come in with some faded jeans. Just to give it some darkness. So we got that little horizon line. So I want to do the same thing, but the opposite. So I'm going to come in with my yellow again and make the reflection in the water. Because it would show in the water, of course. For this one, I'm just going to come in with the broken china. That way the water is lighter than that. So I did some water speckles. Sorry, we got cut off a little bit. Just on the top. I didn't do any on the bottom because I didn't want that effect on the bottom this time. All my stuff out of the way. And then I'm going to take my ripples. And this time, instead of doing my ripples with ink, 
I'm going to do it with the embossing powder that came in the kit. Because I want to show you that blue pearl again. Now, like I said in the first video, this embossing powder is like a chameleon. It kind of takes whatever is behind it. And I think it's because it's not like a white pearl, it's a blue pearl. So if you have a darker background, it's going to come out the color that's sort of underneath, like a blue for us right now. When I did it on the black, you could see like almost a midnight blue. But when you did it on the white, you got that white pearlescent look. So for this, I think we're going to end up with a nice, almost light blue. But it shows that a little bit of contrast to it. And you get that pearlescent shine. So now that we got that cleaned up, we're going to do our stamping. And I really love this little Loch Ness Monster or sea monster they had. And I figured he'd be cool in a night scene. Because why would the Loch Ness Monster come out during the day? He likes to hang out during at night when nobody can see him. And you can see on the little read I have down below how, like I said, if you're really picky about ink staining your stamps, this is what happens sometimes. Like that cocoa brown, I washed that stamp and it's still there. That's one reason I really do like Memento. I don't feel like they their inks stain my stamps. So it's kind of nice. But, I mean, the Hero Arts, it seems to be doing it. So I'm putting also the reeds on both sides just to give it kind of that swampy look like you're looking out from the land to see the sea monster hanging out on the horizon. Now I'm going to add our little fish friend here and make him jumping out of the ripple. as well as the little ducks that we had in the kit. Oops, I just realized I put these ducks on backwards. Let me fix them quickly. They're one of those itty bitty ones that you just don't see it right away that you put it on backwards. So I'm gonna stick them on there. You can have some little night scene here. One thing I was noticing, I don't like my horizon line. It looks a little too blended. So I'm going to come in with my twin tone marker and the fine tip and go and put a little bit of a black kind of line. That way it separates it a little bit better. And I'm also going to come in with my starlight jelly roll pen and just make some little stars in the sky. It'll give us really nice iridescent sparkle. And then I decided, I think I want to add one more ripple. I just feel like there's just not enough ripples in there. So I'm going to add one more. And I'm going to do it, of course, once again in the iridescent embossing powder. I'm going to heat set that again, get my heat tool up nice and warm. And there we go. It's not pretty. Got that fun iridescent look to it and sparkle. And I think we're also going to put some stars in the water because it would have reflected into the water. There is that. And I'm going to take a charcoal card form. I'm not going black this time. I'm going to go charcoal. Because I wanted the black to sit out a little bit better. Now, this is a beautiful little scene, but I did feel like maybe I should end. I do feel like I should add a sentiment since I can't really put one inside. 
So I'm trying to figure out where do I want to place it. I'm going to do the Life is Better at the Lake. My little lake monster, and I'm going to do it right on the horizon. Just to fill in that space that seems a little empty over there. Isn't that adorable? I love this. I love the little iridescence and sparkles that you see when you just tilt the card in the right direction. All right, so for our last card for this video, I'm going to do a silhouette card. And I love doing silhouette scenes with just black and color. I feel like they're just beautiful. And for this one, I'm going to bring out some more of the pinks and purpley tones versus the classic sunset and land and water look so i'm going to come in with my mustard seed oh no fossilized amber why am i calling it mustard seed it's fossilized amber and then i'm going to take in my pink and that is worn lipstick. And I'm going to start with my worn lipstick on the bottom here. <laughs> I can get my paper to hold still. And then I'm going to add in some fun purples. So this is the wilted violet. I'm just going to take it off my little boundary line for now. Just blend it a little bit more. I have to get that horizon line again. I'm just going to slide that under there. Fix up that line right there. And I'm not too concerned because I'm going to come also with a little bit of faded jeans and just put an, a bluish tone to the ends here. The water would be getting bluer by the, as we walk away from the sunset. So in the corners and the farthest end. That almost makes it like a darker purple, which is kind of nice. So I have these mountains, and I am going to stamp a horizon, like mountains and tree line, on this. Now, I also want to make a reflection in the water. So I am going to flip my stamp backwards. Yes, we are going backwards, people. And it will make the top mountain thicker than the the reflection. So we're going to go backwards with that. You can always use the back end of your stamp. You don't always have to use the front end. And sometimes that's the easiest way when you're reflecting a stamp in the water. Or if you need to make a bigger mountain or a bigger island or something like that, you can go the back ways. Now, sometimes you don't get as clean of an impression and you may have to do a second time like I'm going to have to do just to get a clean cut impression but you get this beautiful landscape so now I'm going to do my reflection so I'm going to flip it the right way this time and I'm going to go in with the London fog the first one of course was tuxedo black but the London fog will give us just a slight ghost image in the water that down really good because this is a really light ink so you barely see it all right there we go you can also do this effect if you don't have London fog just remove some of the ink by stamping it a couple times before you put it onto your panel so we're gonna put our tree line and I'm gonna show you here because you're gonna have a little ink overlap and what means is the more layers of black you put on top, the darker it's going to be. So, of course, if you have overlap, it's going to get darker on that section. 
and in this stamp I find there's a little square edge and it kind of makes it hard. I almost wish they made it kind of rounded versus the squared edge because it kind of makes it sometimes easier when you're stamping because then it's not so overlapped. So I have a little spot there that didn't take, but we're going to cover it and I'm going to show you how to take care of that overlapping. Now you can go back and do another layer and just keep on adding it. And that's what I'm going to do the first time. And then I'm going to do another technique called that's going to be blending it with my fingers just to get a softer edge. It's not sticking. Come on, stick. There we go. So I'm just going to cover it a little bit with some just to kind of blend it in. But we still have that edge there. So I'm going to take out my ink pad and just go in wet with some um, ink. And we're going to fill it in. There we go. I had to re ink it a little bit. And what it's going to do is it's going to fill in those spots. And I'm blending, blending it in with my finger. You can do it with a small dauber if you have a small dauber. And it kind of makes like it blend in a little bit better. And do the London Fog tree line. This time I'm not being too concerned with it being blended. It's okay. Because the tree line, it doesn't matter if it's reflected in the same shape, but the mountain, it kind of does. Now we're going to take our little dock. That went pretty straight. I'm gonna get another magnet just to hold it down better. Okay, so there we're gonna blow our dock out. And I could have put this dock right in the middle, but I decided to offset it a little bit because I'm gonna put a sentiment in here too, and I want the sentiment on the other side. So there is our little dock. One more time, just to get really dark. All right. Now we're gonna add, I was gonna put the little life preserver, but I think we're gonna skip it. We're gonna put our reeds down again. And you can see the difference once again with, like I said, the reeds and the two different inks that I used. One's dark, that was a Hero Arts ink, and the other one was done with Memento, so I didn't get the staining that I got with it. And sometimes you don't get the staining. It depends on the darkness and the pigment of their ink pads. But I found the cocoa to be really, really dark. So we're going to do a couple of things of the Memento Tuxedo in that. And we got our pretty reeds in there. And now we're going to take our two jumping people and put them in there. Some more tuxedo black. Push them down there. Isn't this fun? I am loving how this card is coming out. I love shadow cards. They're just, to me, they're just so much fun. And I'm going to put some ripples. And I'm going to do those in grape jelly. Kind of keep that purpley theme going on. Let me get my grape jelly. Put one more ripple that way. That way it looks balanced. And then the last thing, we're having some fun with some stamping color here. We're gonna put in the jump in. Isn't that pretty? And we need some birds. I was just still seeing if I could put this life preserver. I don't think there's going to be any good way to do it. Now 
And I'll put some blackbirds in our horizon. And well, I'm going to stick this all on a black card form. It's beautiful. I mean, I love the colors in this. Sometimes you just have to have fun with it. And with silhouettes, you don't have to worry about Copic coloring and shadowing. It's kind of a fun, simple design that just really speaks. Thousands of words just in just the image. And isn't that pretty? It doesn't need any extra. It's just perfect the way it is. This is how you can make some beautiful cards with just the basic colors and these beautiful stamps. So like you see, we have making fun use of all the scenery with some silhouette cards, as well as some 3D mounted cards with some three dimensional effects. And either way, you get beautiful cards with this kit. So if you enjoy this video, please check out our last uploaded video as well as one specially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to like, subscribe, ring for notifications, but also check out our website, our Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook pages, and soon to be WordPress.